Welcome to Inside Auto Podcast, where we feature everyone and anyone you'd want to talk to in and out of the automotive industry. Ilana Shabtai here, host of Inside Auto Podcast, where we interview top dealers, GMs, marketers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders in and out of the automotive industry. And before we introduce today's guest, this episode is sponsored by FullPath.com. FullPath is the automotive industry's leading customer data and experience platform. FullPath enables dealers to turn their first-party data into lifelong customers by unifying silent data sources and creating exceptional customer experiences. To learn more, visit fullpath.com. Today's guest is Chris Colsant. Did I say that right? Colsant. Colsant. Chris Colsant. We just went over this before we started the podcast. How did I mess it up again? Chris Colsant, originally Colsante. That's right. Italian. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining the podcast. Um, Chris, wow. Chris has years of experience in inside and outside sales when it comes to the automotive industry, knows dealers knows, you know, the market, knows inventory. So I'm really excited to have Chris on the call. He um, most recently spent some years at Cars, Dealer Inspire, and just um, more recently joined the Full Path team as the SDR director. So super excited to have someone like this on the team. More excited for in this moment for you to be on the podcast. Um, we're going to talk a lot about just like your background, your expertise. I want to hear um, what dealers are saying. What are their hesitations? What are they excited about? What do we think we're going into 2025 with and, and how we'll sort of end the year? Um, so again, I love having people with this type of expertise on the podcast because everyone has their own perspective. And uh, thanks again for joining. No, thanks for having me. Please, first and foremost, stop using that word expertise. That team term is just <laughs> not even in my vocabulary. But yes, um, very excited to be here. And thank you, Lana. I love everything that you've been doing with the Inside Auto podcast. And Watched every Thanks. episode. What is this like? Wow. hundred and ten? Something like that. I mean, nice. it's like this is an honor for me because I have my biggest fan on the on the show. So that's right. I'm here. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Well, first, before we even talk about the good stuff, before we get to the good stuff, how did you get into automotive? How did you find yourself in this industry? Yeah. So very interesting. I spent um, my four years at Eastern Illinois University with Mr. Tony Romo. For those that know Tony Romo, quarterback, former quarterback of the Cowboys, and. After graduating with a degree in marketing, I jumped into a Fortune 500 company called Cintas, the uniform people. Um, and that was very short lived for the mere fact that my best friend at the time um, would always come to the weekend events and different parties, family parties, driving different cars, Corvettes, you name it. And I was always kind of like not only enamored, but wondering like, how does a sales man <laughs> turn into a sales manager that quickly in the automotive industry? And that led me to the, the best kept secret that is the automotive industry. Um, and all I had to do was swallow that pride because I, I came out of college with a degree in marketing going, do I really want to be in the car business with the stigma that it once had and kind of to this day seems to carry. Um, so that was kind of the, the pill that I had to swallow. And ever since then, I can now work my way obviously through sales and sales management, but uh, general sales manager and, and beyond. So um, I spent 12 years with a large auto group in Chicago. And the last seven, as you mentioned, with Dealer Inspire, I'm very blessed for both of those opportunities and uh, part of my journey. Yeah, and it really probably gives you so much perspective being on the retail side and the vendor side and understanding the challenges of both. Um, you had mentioned that uh, there's a stigma around automotive. Do you feel like, I mean, you know, I'm not in the States anymore. I'm obviously very close to the market and come often, but it's not like I go to buy my car in the States anymore. I feel like the stigma is getting better. Am I living in a bubble? Yeah, no, not a bubble. It's it's getting better. But I think getting back to just the blocking and tackling, like we've heard a lot, is yeah. happening. The fundamentals, those fundamentals, it, it's kind of, if, if you don't know what you don't know, and I think that there's been a lot of, I don't want to say bad practice, but I think the teachings mm -hmm. maybe are still antiquated yeah. in some light. Yeah. So we we could we we can definitely work on that because it's such an exciting industry and when you're actually in it you understand how good the people are that it's unfortunate that we still have that stigma but I'm I, I'll predict that within ten years we can we'll see that go away um, right. and before we get into more predictions because I would love to talk a little bit about what's going to happen in 2025 according to 
according to you. Um, talk a little bit about, I know now specifically at Full Path, you're really talking, you're, you're leading an SDR team. So you're kind of living and breathing what it's like to call dealers and understand what their hesitations might be. But beyond that, right, beyond the month or two months that you've been at Full Path, just thinking in general the past six months when you are talking to dealers, what do you see as their biggest hesitation when it comes to tech adopt, like change, but specifically tech adoption? I think it's the, uh, going back to Nate, to use that mantra, we don't know what you don't know. I think it's, yeah. they, we don't realize we're sitting on a gold mine right now of the data mm -hmm. versus third party. And I think that what it is, is that we've been, and I say we as a, a car dealer myself, as yeah. ingrained of those bad practices and bad data that essentially we're, we don't have a good way to scrub, cleanse, and or unify that. And again, I don't mean to be biased with full path, but that's kind of what obviously uh, takes flight. And I think that being making that data actionable is something that's never really been on the cusp or been exploited to the, the strength that it really is. And I think now that we have the ability to do so, um, I think you're going to see a lot of dealer partners jump on. And, but do you feel, I mean, so that's, that I, I appreciate that answer and I think you've, you've really hit it. And I think that's accurate. Do you feel like dealers don't know what they don't know? That can lead to a lot of hesitations. Do you think that the education in the industry is getting better? And if not, how do you think we should be in really educating dealers on what you just said, right? They're all sitting on this gold mine of data. They have thousands and tens of thousands of customers in their database. How can we be better at educating the dealer community so that they can have the most sophisticated marketing and speak to shoppers that want to be reached at, right, at that level? I think it's it's a great, great thought and insight is to to kind of reset and level set the time commodity that we all have, right? So we have five different vendors that we have five different meetings with, and we have mm -hmm. to hold each one of them accountable and vice versa. And I think being able to unify all of that under one kind of ecosystem holistically full path kind of enables our dealer partners to do so and i think that education piece is how do we save time through our day-to-day -day and our workflow because at the end of the day you can only do so much with so many hours in a day and when you utilize and automate deployment that's when you can really start to kind of scale and see the the hyper focused messaging at scale take flight and that education piece to answer your question is simply what are we doing from a holistic standpoint? How can we remove certain kind of incumbents and make life easier for us while in exploiting the heck out of that gold mine that we were just talking about? So yeah, long winded I, answer, but hopefully that touched No, on. it's actually really insightful. Like I wonder if we should start having conversations with dealers and for the dealers listening, you know, feel free to message us. But um, I wonder if the conversation should really be around that, like trying to understand where their um, lack of efficiencies are or where they're spending too much time, whether that's in marketing or something else, just to start a conversation and really give input on like how tech in general and AI and generative AI can actually boost efficiencies while also, you know, making like keeping employees happier, more productive, um, more strategic, mm -hmm. less monotonous, manual, et cetera. So that's an, that's an interesting approach to education is also just like trying to understand where dealers feel that pain and then figuring out a way to kind of like weave in technology to help them with the, the pains and, and the challenges. Interesting. And, and just so before we move on to some of the predictions, since you've been in the industry for so long, and maybe this even happened when you were on the retail side, but can you talk about a time where you really felt the impact of a new technology? Maybe it was like, I don't know, mobile websites or whatever it might have been can you like i know that you know, this might take like a second to think but can you think of like a revolutionary software or technology or change that like really changed your system whether it was on the retail side or on the software side and like you sort of experienced that so what was that like and what what was that thing that actually made the change uh it was two words equity mining equity mining as it entered automotive was a very underutilized tool and no one really knew how to use it properly, right? And how to have when was it? When would you say this was like introduced to non -motive? I'm dating myself now. So this would be 2007. Okay. 2008. And it started with like the GM list of the GM had a smart buy program, they called for any GM dealers that have been in the business for many years. I'm sure know with GM smart buy and that smart okay. buy program is no longer. That was essentially a list that was derived to try and acquire back those vehicles obviously to put them back into a different smart buy 
It's yeah. a form of leasing now, obviously. But my whole point in saying that was equity mining was my kind of bread and butter. And that's what not only helped me kind of grow through in the industry, but it, to answer your question is a, a hundred percent was a disruptor in the industry with regards to like, wait, how do we approach this with the DMS connectivity? What is the actual like penny perfect? It, do, it does it need to be penny perfect. So there were so many like just trials that's and so tribulations through equity yeah. mining um, that I found many alike in my in peers were having troubles with. So I, I kind of took that as my skill set or my expertise, if you will. And I told you I wouldn't use that word. Um, and that really, that really helped my growth throughout the automotive industry. And I think to this day, it kind of comes back um, full circle, which is great, it, is the fact that not only is it a well-oiled machine now at many dealerships, and if it's not, it needs to be. Um, but the fact that there's only so many, like I said, hours in manpower, woman power in a day that you can utilize that equity mining tool. So to be able to take that to scale, I think is just a huge win as we've continued to evolve in equity mining. So that, that is a hundred percent. My answer is equity mining That's has cool. been yeah. a, a disruptor and was a, something that was so foreign to myself and others alike. And again, it's become so ingrained now in the dealership kind of fabric. It's just a matter of who's doing it right. And, and what are those words? Cause sales are never lost by a few dollars are lost by a few words. So it's, how are we approaching that? That's interesting. And it's cool because you probably saw the evolution of the process and the technology when it comes to equity mining. Mm -hmm. So that that's like a, a really interesting thing to witness. And, and I hope that we can see some of those trends in the end of we're at the last, you know, quarter of 2024. We've I mean, as an industry, this industry has seen it has been way too interesting for too many years. And we really need like a boring year ahead of us. But that being said, with like Corona and uh, inventory shortage and interest rates. And now, I mean, the whole, the whole South, I mean, Florida is getting hit like crazy in weather and it's just un unbelievable what's happening. And I'm sure the dealers right now are, are um, really suffering from it. So I'm hoping that they'll, they can have a, a nice comeback after the hurricanes are done because right now Tampa is really unfortunately getting hit again. Um, what and do you on think? That point yeah. On that point, if I may, just real quick, of we're, we are all saying our prayers and we want to make sure that everyone, yes. if there's anything that we can do or I can do personally um, regarding around your just digital efforts around the, the tragedy that we're experiencing, that everyone's experiencing, yeah. please let us know. Um, we would be yeah. more than happy to do so. Yeah, so all of all of these these events, way too, again, interesting events that are hitting the automotive industry. Where do you think or what are some of your predictions for the, for the market in the beginning of 2025 as we sort of end the year? Um, whether it, it, it can be pertinent to digital and technology or just in general, like where do you see interest rates coming in? What are, what's used inventory going to look like? Anything that you think I would love for you to share. I, I think that the, as you mentioned in the beginning part of the discussion too, the, the, we hear blocking and tackling, getting back to the blocking and tackling. I think yeah. de defining what that is at your store is different from store to store that I've seen. And I think that is a, is a, just a universal challenge that we've got to make sure that, again, there's consistency and accountability in everything that we're doing. And I think that defining what those look like is going to be um, pivotal to, to being efficient in 2025, because that is kind of the word, uh, that I want to cascade through 2025 is efficiency because that correlates That's back to time, funny. money, everything. And if we are efficient in everything that we're doing, I'm one of those like time hackers too, you know, looking how do you brush your teeth faster, do all that. So yeah. those macro, micro <laughs> economics. Save a minute um, here, save a minute there. No, I love that you're saying that because um, at NADA 2024 this year, I interviewed one of our one of our clients and one of my good friends in the industry, one of my dear friends, April Simmons, who runs yeah. the marketing team at Horn Auto Group. And I was she was on Inside Auto Podcast. I did like five minute segments, and maybe we primed you since you've listened to every episode. But I asked her, oh, no. "What does she think this year is going to be about?" And she said, "This is the year of efficiencies." Oh no, twenty twenty four is the year of efficiency. No, I love it. I think there's I know. I did not. I think, yeah, definitely not plagiarizing or, or copycat. No, so. no, 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 no. We know that. We know that. I'm sure April is is honored and 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 honestly, like it's it's nice to see the consistencies in the industry from different angles. Like it's it's great that we're all working towards a more efficient, well-oiled machine that I think can really help dealerships focus on other things. Um, but yeah, it was just, I love, I love that you said that because it just brought me back to what April said, which is always nice. It's always nice to mention her on here. Um, and I think that, that it, it probably started in this year and will continue in, in 2025. And I think data efficiencies is going to be a big one. 
I don't know why I didn't say that. That's what I, I no, take no, my answer back. Data efficiency is number one. No, but awesome. you get the point. Hundred, I couldn't yeah, agree more. It is because data drives all the decisions, right? Data drives decisions yeah. across the board for even a personal life. For me, um, yeah. and I think that allowing that to seep into your dealership is is paramount, especially to create efficiencies. So, yeah, data definitely. So I hope yes. So I hope we see that, and I hope we see a, a lot of success this year and a boring year, which would be great for us. Um, as a, as an industry, I feel like the automotive industry deserves a boring year. Um, anything else you want to share with us before we sign off here? Leasing. I'd like to talk, just not talk about, but just if there's yeah. any, any OEMs out there that are listening to this, if there's a way that we could adjust residuals, adjust money factors, make leasing more consumer friendly, like it once was, um, that's obviously going to play a huge role in, in, in moving the deal. Cause we have a lot, yeah, a lot of folks from that. an equity mining standpoint, you're seeing nowadays you're, you're taking folks out of leasing and you can't put them back into another lease based on the, the parameters and ways that they've been set up now. It's just not financially feasible. Um, so you're seeing a lot of folks being taken out of their, their lease into a retail contract and keeping that payment in the same ballpark. So there's just a lot of different nuances that I think can help lease penetration, but that's going to come from obviously OEMs like and, and casting But down. what do you think is influencing that? Is it the interest rates or is it something... It's a mixture. Absolutely. So the, the, okay. the, yeah, it's the value, the valuation of said uh, pre-market or pre-driven vehicles. Mm -hmm. When that, when those prices kind of skyrocketed after 1920 in there, they haven't really hovered back down. So obviously residuals in comparison values to said uh, lease loan to value um, is creating a little bit of um, what's the word? Just like a, a discrepancy, not a gap. Yeah. A bigger, yeah. Bigger financial yeah. gap that would ultimately make it feasible or even Interesting. Yeah. So like leases, lessees that were leasing cars for four or 500 bucks a month are now $800 a month. Yes. And yeah. also are people extending their lease more? Like I feel like people are. Are buying them out. So a lot of them are buying, buying them, them out. out. They're staying in their, in their cars longer. Yep. So you're, you're, yeah, you're seeing a lot of folks that are buying out their lease now when they realize the harsh reality of, geez, Louise, unless uh, I go into a finance yep. contract or write a check for the vehicle, you know, it's hard to go. Yeah, least, that's least, such a good I've, call out. I've done, I've done lit. I've laced my yeah. last 10 cars and this was the first year I stopped. Interesting. Well, yeah. Well, if there are manufacturers on here, please help us. This sounds like something we can focus on as an industry in 2025. I love it. Thanks thank you trip. so much, Chris. As I said, you, I mean, you brought the the, the knowledge here. You dropped it. I'm so stop. thank you so much. You know so much more about automotive. So it's it's just so nice to be able to learn from you. So thank you again for joining oh. Inside Auto Podcast. And for those listening, you can always turn tune in on your favorite channels and your favorite outlets. If it's Spotify, Apple, you name it, InsideAutoPodcast.com. Thanks again, Chris. Hey, thanks, Alana. Thanks for listening to Inside Auto Podcast. Check out our other episodes with top entrepreneurs and industry leaders.